Hidden in the beautiful, secluded countryside of Herefordshire lies an architectural masterpiece, as well as something of an enigma. This is the Church of St Mary and St David, which is more generally referred to as Kilpeck Church. This is the famous door of Kilpeck Church, about which, to be quite honest, we know very little for certain. What is this door all about? Well, almost certainly it's, it's about the battle between good and evil. First of all, you've got the tree of life above the doorway, and that is growing out of water. That zigzag is very typical and almost certainly represents flowing water. That is significant because water comes into the center of the church as, as well. Above it, you've got the angel, and then right above in the corbels, and they are not gargoyles, they are corbels, is what should be the Lamb of God. Now the purists won't acknowledge that it is anything but a lamb, but almost certainly it represents a horse. So we have not the Agnus Dei, but the Equus Dei. To a certain extent, the important part is, that, is the snakes here. The snakes with the head up and head down there. Now, these, the snakes of Kilpeck are not the snakes of the Garden of Eden. They are the snakes of regeneration. And these snakes, with the tail of one in the mouth of the other, are called Ouroboros. And the idea of the snakes circling the world, devouring itself, and so representative both of life and death, dates back to as much as, what, 1500 BC. So it's a very old idea. And I'm sure that's what the, the main bit of the doorway here, all about the circle of life. That idea is again replicated in the fourth corbel up at the top, which, if you look at it, it's exactly the same idea again. Snakes with the tail of one in the mouth of the other, but it's in the form of a Celtic knot as well. But one of the facets here that interests me more than almost anything else is this one. Now, this is Indalo Man, and this dates from something like 5000 BC. And it is found in Almeria in Spain and it is a good luck symbol. And I think it's in a very significant place on this particular doorway. It's sometimes, before I forget about it, referred to as the Rainbow Man as well, because of the way of the arch arch over the top. What is it doing here? Well, a suggestion only is that below it, you have chaos. There is no pattern here at all. But above it, you can immediately see you've got a pattern. So. Perhaps it's there to say that even among the chaos of the world, there is still hope. One of the other particular interests on this doorway is these two figures here. Certainly they are warriors. Where have they probably originated from? Well, the shape of the cap here is significant. This is a Phrygian cap. Which, which originates from Asia Minor. The other thing that's interactive is the fact that they are wearing trousers. And that is extremely unusual. They are probably warriors from the Middle East. I would like to try to connect these with the founder of the church, 
Hugh de Kilpeck, who would have lived at the time when warriors frequently went, of course, to the Holy Land uh, in the time of the Crusades. We don't know if Hugh de Kilpeck was a crusader, but there are a number of indications up on the church that he might have done so. As to the other things, you come and you speculate. Apart from the wonderful south door there, the other carving that perhaps interests more people than any others, it's certainly one I get more questions about, is the Sheila gig up here. It's either a symbolism of lust, looking up there, because many of these corbels will have something to do with the evils of the outside world compared with the sanctuary within. On the other hand, it may there be there to frighten away the devil. Now there's quite a lot of idea of the devil at Kilpeck in its way. My feeling is that it's more likely than anything else to be a Celtic fertility symbol. The whole of so much of the carvings here have to do with life and you've got to remember that if you'd lived here 900 years ago and you were 35 you were very very much at the end of your life. Now we come to the inside of the church, which may look plain, but I can assure you there is just as much interest in the inside of the church as there is in the outside. It's a very typical form of nave for the people, through the first archway into the chancel for the priests, and through the second archway into the holiest part of the church, the apse. really the most important end of the church. This is almost unique anywhere in this country. And people from France say they can hardly believe we've even got it here. So this is very special. What does it all, what does it all represent? Well, the four ribs certainly represent flowing water. Possibly the heads at the top represent the mouths of the four rivers that flowed out of Eden, one of which is the Euphrates. But what's it also important is that immediately under the altar there, there's water rising up. It's a long way down, but the water rises up there immediately under those heads, and the water flows exactly down the centre of the church. So this church is built on and about water. <laughs> Under this bit of carpet, there is a headstone. It's circular, and it is almost certainly Templar. 
The other thing that indicates that this may be Templar is the fact on this tombstone there are no names because the Templar said we, we don't need to have her names on our tombstones, we are already known to God. Now, if that is Templar, does that tie in a little bit with whether Hugh de Kilpec, the founder himself, was a Templar? If he did, it would help to explain a little bit more why we've got this remarkable little church. Come and explore the church and the castle ruins for yourself. Or visit the website at kilpeckchurch.org.uk for more information and to download the free audio tour.